Hi, this is Christina from Proverbs 31 Woman. Today I'm standing under our oldest apple tree. It started blooming on Easter. It's just a few days after Easter and I thought it would be a great time to take you around the homestead again and see what new edibles have popped up since my video weed walk last month. There's quite a few. We do still have um, all of the ones that I mentioned last month. Some of them are starting to get a little bit more bitter, which often happens with wild edibles as they age. Uh, but today we're gonna cover some things that are on trees as well as things that are low to the ground that you can find not only in rural areas, but in the suburbs and some of them often you see in the city as well. So, and there's some interesting flavors out there today too. So come with me and let's see what we can find. So here we have cleavers. Cleavers are very common even in urban areas. And they're called cleavers because they have little tiny hairs on them that cling. They might cling to your clothing, for example. And you might think, well, is it gonna cling to my throat? And the answer is, it could. <laughs> so the trick to eating cleavers is to take the new growth at the tippy top. You just eat the tip and it's very nutritious. It's great in a salad or just as a snack. Uh, to give you an idea of the flavor, it just, it tastes like a salad green and, but it's not especially bitter. My children love it. So mm. it's really quite good. It does have a little bit of a bitter end note. So think of it as um, like a, a, a bitter salad green. But remember, with whenever you're foraging, if you find, if you try a plant and you try it and it tastes too bitter to you, then don't be afraid to try it in a different location or to get pick younger leaves because those things make a difference in the flavor and the nutrition of the plant. Cleavers, yum. Here we are in front of one of our evergreen trees. This is a spruce, but the same principle applies to all evergreens. We're looking for the tips. They often have a little papery, um, I don't know, papery cover on them, and they're very small at that point, and that's usually when they're best. The smaller they are, the less intense the flavor is, and the bigger they are, the more intense the flavor is, and they can get really intense. So do try the little tiny ones first. Um, the flavor is really hard to describe. It's not like anything you're gonna buy in a store. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a winter green, just in the potency of the flavor and the way it lingers in your mouth. Um, you can eat these as is, of course, or you can make it into tea, you can make it into jelly, you can make it into syrup, you can put it in baked goods. Some people put it in their sugar and that imparts the flavor in the sugar. Lots and lots of things you can do with it. And it happens to be a little bit medicinal too because, primarily because it's full of vitamin C. So if you're ever in a situation where you don't have fresh fruit, <laughs> Hopefully this will never happen. Uh, don't die of scurvy like the pioneers did. There's usually evergreen trees all around you in the spring. You eat some of this. Um, I like to dehydrate it and make it into a tea for when I have a cold or a sore throat. Um, it kind of has a drying quality and that's part of the reason it helps with a cold. Hmm. That's a nice young one. It has really interesting flavor. It's kind of an acquired taste, but give it a try and see what you think. This is one of the wild elderberries we have throughout our forest. Elderberries grow in a wide variety of wild areas, and also you can buy domestic varieties and people have them in their gardens especially in the old days, like if you're around old gardens, you will see a lot of elderberries. Elderberries, obviously the berries are, especially if they're the black or the blue, are highly prized edible and they're also very medicinal. Um, it's one of the few herbs that science has really studied well and agrees, hey, this works. <laughs> 
Um, they're often used for colds, flus, that kind of thing. In addition to just being delicious, the leaves and the stems and the bark are all very toxic. So whatever you do, make sure you're not ingesting that part of the plant. There are also some look-alikes, kind of, if you're not looking very carefully or if you're new to foraging. So as always with all of the plants I show you, please, please make sure that you are identifying them properly before you consume them. There's lots of books out there, lots of things online that you can double check the plant, look at the shape of the leaf, look at the shape of the stem and the flower and all those little details are really important. So a lot of my elderberries are up high and this one is down lower and a little bit easier to film. Right now the flowers are really tiny, they're just starting to go, but they get quite large. Elderberry flowers, or elder flowers, they're often called, are used to make syrup, jelly, they're used in baking. A lot of times you'll see them on cakes. They're a beautiful decoration for a wedding cake, for example. Um, they're often dried and made into tea, and they are considered medicinal, having a lot of the same properties as the berries do. So when you pick them, you want to make sure you're eating the flowers only. And also bear in mind that whenever you're picking these, that's a loss of berries. So, you know, just don't take all of them off the off of the tree or the bush. I'm not sure which it's considered. Um, I try to get the ones that it's going to be hard to reach those berries. Um, so just as with all foraging, you don't want to take all of it because then there won't be any for next year. I was going to taste this for you. I've never tasted them fresh. Huh, it's a really interesting flavor. At first it doesn't taste like anything, but then as you chew, it has sort of um, the flavor of oh, almost celery or a, a juicy kind of lettuce. Um, you don't want to wash these before you consume them because it does wash away a lot of the flavor. And again, depending upon the kind of elderberry you have, what color the berries end up being, it's going to affect the flavor of the flowers as well. Each one tastes a little bit different. That's kind of one of the cool things about foraging is that the, where the plant is located and you know the conditions of the soil there and also of course the variety affects the flavor. It makes it kind of an adventure. Now I want to show you about curly dock, or sometimes it's called yellow dock. Um, it has sort of a curl-shaped leaf when they first come out in the spring, hence the name. It tastes a lot like spinach. Uh, with this, it's very much important to go ahead and cook it before you eat it. That's because it has certain properties in it that if you consumed a lot of it, and it would take quite a lot, it would make you sick. Um, so when you cook it, you just throw it in a pot of boiling water, let it cook for one minute, drain it, and then repeat, and then it's ready to go. And I have used this in every recipe where I've used cooked spinach, for example, enchiladas and it tastes great. And it's uh, good properties as far as the vitamins and nutrients in it, and it's free. What's not to love? <laughs> um, the plant in the spring is very small, but it will get rather tall, probably up to you know your knee, maybe a little bit higher. Um, it will, in the summer or fall, get seeds, which you can collect and grind up and use as like a grain, or you could make your granola with it or something like that, eat it like grape nuts. Um, and the root is also considered medicinal. There are two types of plantain. One is called narrow leaf plantain because it has kind of a long skinny leaf. You can eat this but it's rather fibrous and tastes kind of like I imagine grass tastes. So, can eat it, but it's not that palatable. It is medicinal, however. The other type of plantain is called broadleaf plantain. Here's a very young one, 
it has a leaf kind of similar to spinach and it's a great salad green when it's young in the spring and as it ages it gets a little more fibrous and more bitter and is better cooked um, this also is medicinal but it's really tasty to eat as well in later in the year it will get little stalks that come up that almost look like small cattails so a lot of times people don't really notice them until they get to that point so think about where you've seen that in your yard and give it a try so there you have it weeds for every palate some really strong some really mildly flavored some from trees some from little low growing lawn weeds things that you will find mostly in rural areas and things that you can find even in the heart of a big city so my hope is that these videos will open your eyes to a lot of the wild plants that we might otherwise ignore or maybe find annoying but god put them here for a purpose the way that I learned to forage was I simply looked around my yard and I would pinpoint one weed and take a bunch of pictures of it and then I'd go online and I'd look at books that I found in the library that I purchased somewhere and I would positively identify that weed. Sometimes I couldn't and so I'd move on to the next but usually, usually I was able to identify that plant and then I would find out if it had any useful properties. Was it medicinal? Was it edible? That is how you learn, and I hope that you will take the time to do that too. It's not that hard, and it's a wisdom that's being lost, which is a shame. So go out, forage, find some wild food. It's really fun to do as a family, and it teaches us so much about nature and science and nutrition and all of those things. And while you're at it, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like and share and subscribe as well. And please visit me at my blog, Proverbs 31 Woman.